That's all you gotta do to vacuum. I've got everything labeled here. This is your pool side. This is your spa side. These are your electric actuators, so you don't never touch these. These automatically turn when you hit buttons on your remote. Okay. These are the only two valves you'll ever turn. These are your two main drains in the pool, the in the ones? bottom of the pool. Yep. Okay. This is your skimmer, which is the white plate on the pool deck where we're gonna hook our vacuum. So, when you go to vacuum, you're gonna loosen this nut up here. Turn, I usually shut about 90% of the drains off. That's all you do out here to vacuum. And we'll go in the pool and hook all the vacuum stuff up. Okay. Oh, okay. So, this is your vacuum head. Snaps on, just like this, push the two pins. Line it up, snaps in. Okay. Now, this is your skimmer here. That's your automatic fill for the pool over there. So, on your hose, you got a swivel in. It actually says connect the back head on them now. Mm -hmm. Or actually it shows you a picture. Some of them say connect the back head, but this has got a picture of it. Okay. Swivel end always goes to your vacuum head. Snap that on like that. Define swivel head. The then, picture? Yep. This end here swivels. Yeah. Okay. Your other end is stationary. Oh, got it, yep. got it, got it. Okay. Pretty much white to white with your vacuum plate on okay. this end, blue okay. to blue. Okay. Snap it on like that. And take your vacuum. So right now is the water, uh, it's sucking. Yeah. Uh, it'll, okay. So. Right now, the way we got our valves, we got majority of our drains off. We got more suction to our skimmer line where we're gonna hook our okay. vacuum. Oh, got it, okay. This gives you more suction when you're vacuuming. Oh, I see. Okay. Alright. Once you use these hoses a couple times, they limber up and they're a pain in the butt when they're new, and especially when it's cold out. Ah, so, what I do, I just throw the whole hose in the water. You're going to take the end going down to your vacuum, and you're going to fish it down the wall. Pretty much filling the hose up with water. Ah, okay. Good. So, you're going to have some air in, that, in the hose. Mm -hmm. uh, so, how does that affect? So when it gets sucked. It'll make the pump lose its prime for a second, but it'll yeah. catch right back. Okay. Get to the end. Top it off with some water here. Now, take your lid off your skimmer. This goes directly over your skimmer basket. If this end ever comes off on you, just mm -hmm. the white end that doesn't swivel, mm -hmm. connects to here. Okay. Take this. Right over your... So it's already sucking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because... Yep. Uh, Alright. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep, we got less less suction to our drains. We got more suction to our skimmer. You can hear that the pump. I don't know if you can hear it over there. kind of lost its prime for a uh -huh. second, but it will catch it right back. Just because we had a little bit of air in the hose. Yeah. And how do you know if it's working? Um, well, you can't really feel it, but... Okay. It is, so its purpose is to suck up the little pieces on the yep, bottom? Yep, dirt, anything there. laying on the bottom. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you just, uh, as needed, or... Pretty much as yeah, needed. Yeah, so I you kind of look in, if your things yeah. start, to, you see some Correct. sand or dirt pile mm -hmm. up, then... Filter washing, like I was telling her, usually every two weeks. If the dog's swimming there a lot, I probably yeah. would do it once a week. Yeah like this. Okay. I get it close. Wait, if you want to yep. film this. Yep. <laughs> I get it close to the top of the water. Okay. Pull it in quick as you can. Okay. And you just take some of your hose and pull in what you need. Okay. At what point will there be too much air that it's it's going to stop sucking? Then you have to reprime it and start over again? You'll hear the pump change yeah. like it did now. Yeah. You give it a second. And then it'll catch its prime, and then you can go back to vacuuming. How do you know that it's it's caught again? You'll, you can hear how the pump changed just, over there, yeah. and you'll hear it kind of back to normal. Okay. You hear it change. And you can feel it. You can put your hand under and feel it too, right? right? So, okay. As long as you keep up with everything, test once a month, you'll be fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, to take everything out of the pool, we're going to have to shut it down. You can either do it with your remote, or we can go out to the uh, to the main box and shut it off. I'll go ahead and show you with the remote while we're right here. Okay. Now, to shut the pool down, you hit your more button once. You've got a system off up here at the top. Hit that once. 
that shuts the whole system down. That's a manual on or off. So this pool will not come back on until you manually hit that button. Okay. Okay. So once it's off, now we'll come back over here, pull everything out of the pool. shut it down whether say we just did it on the remote you have to turn it back on with the remote okay okay so you can't shut it off with the remote in here and go out there and turn it on you got to turn it back on with the remote can okay so we should but we should always turn it off. do what you just did out there mm -hmm. like to the night so vacuum you always got to shut that line off out there okay. yes all right same thing we just did on your remote in there if you wanted to Say you had your vacuum in the pool and you wanted to shut the system down. You got your filter button here. Hit that, and that shuts the system down out here. So Instead that, of doing the remote. Instead of the okay. remote, correct. Okay. That's how you turn your system on or off out here. For right now, we're fixing to do some filter washing, so we'll leave it off. Okay. But we could do the system off in there as well and just leave it off. Well, like I said, if you turn it off with your remote, you got to turn it back on with yes. the remote. Yeah, but I could do it out with the remote. Yes. Once it's off and I pull the yes. hose out, mm -hmm. then I could just leave it off and come out here and do whatever you're fixing. Do whatever do. you're doing okay. and turn it back on with that remote. And, and what circumstances would we want to be turning off the whole system? Pretty much for filter washing. J just for filter yeah. washing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does the pump then run all the time? No. Essentially, or if we're going to actually set it up on a timer today. Oh, okay. It's run about nine hours a day, roughly. All right. Okay. So we'll set yeah. it up on a timer here in a minute, and then uh, you'll be good to go. Mm -hmm. When you get done vacuuming, now remember we turn this turn this off when we vacuum. Yes. Now it's going to go just like your other one here. Now both of them lines are on. Okay. But you didn't touch the skimmer before, did you? Mm -mm. Okay. I had a little bit of the skimmer off just from our, our acid treatment we did because I wanted the, the main drains to pull a little harder than the skimmer. Cause that's why I had it cranked okay. a little bit. But okay. It'll normally, always be, I don't touch the skimmer, right? Normally, both your raised white arrows are going to be facing your backyard. Okay. So when well, I go to do the cleaning, I just turn that one. About 90% roughly. Okay. And don't ever touch the other one. I usually try to line that raised white arrow with that first notch. Okay. When you get done vacuuming, open that back up. Okay. And you're good to go. Okay. And main drains are the ones in the bottom Correct. of the pools? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. Skimmer or your uh, filters in here. You got a little red air relief valve on the top of your canister. Counterclockwise lets the pressure off the system. All right, on your latch here, you got a red tab. You're gonna hold that red tab, spin this ring off. A couple turns here, and the whole top of the canister comes in. Magic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then we would pull this out, rinse it. And this one's pretty clean, so we really don't even need to rinse, but you watch me do the one over there. Right. Pretty much start at the top, work everything to the bottom. Okay. Put it back in, there's no top or bottom. Set it back in there, push it down. Does it fit over anything? Or there's just... a white, yep, there's a white tube in there. May I lean on this? See that oh, white got tube? It. Yeah, yep. yeah. Always go over that. Okay. Push it down where it's standing flush. Okay. Then you can put your lid back on. Okay. I would say about once every month or so, you got a drain right here okay. in the bottom of your canister. Uh -huh. You just open this up, it's just a little plug. Once your filter's out and you got a water hose over here, any debris in the bottom of your canister, you can wash out of this. Put the hose in? Yep, that. when when your filter's out, yeah. like when you're over here doing your cleaning and stuff, uh -huh. take this out, pull the plug out, oh. take your hose, and you can rinse anything that's in the bottom of your canister. So it's in a closed system, it's not going under the no, slab no, or anything, gonna, just out here. Right here, okay. yep, there'll be a hole here. Gotcha. You just rinse everything right out of the hole. Okay. And so that's easy to get out. I'll understand how to get that off. Yes. Oh, okay. You don't use any kind of wrenches or anything on it. Just hand tighten this back okay. up. Just give it a little snug. Okay. All right. Put your lid back on here. You always want your gauge to face you. Okay. Center it up like that. You'll kind of hear it snap into position. Okay. Hold the top, spin the bottom. Once you get a good turn and a half or so, you can use two hands on the bottom so you hear that little slight click. Once you hear that, don't go any further. Okay. 
Okay. And the red thing ended up on that side. That Every time, time you take it on or off, it's going to be in a different position. Oh, really? Okay. Yep. So, so just whenever you go to take it off, always look for that red tab. And you mashed it in? Taking it off, yes. Yes. Putting okay. it back on, you don't have to hold it. Yeah, okay. You want to actually leave it, don't touch that, and just spin it, and then it'll click itself into where it's locked okay. in. So do, do this first, and then hold that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. And is this back in place now? We're going to leave that open because okay. we we're going when we fire the system back up, we're going to have to bleed all the air back off. Oh, gotcha. Okay. You also got a good a basket in here we always want to check. And this is your pump basket. Just take your hand, pump that forward, and this is going to be your pump basket. Okay. Any of the bigger chunks that bypass the skimmer, mm -hmm. like dog hair, little rocks, leaves, whatever, it's going to get in this. All your fine debris, like sand going to go to your your main cartridge okay put your basket back in here you always want to make sure this hole faces your pipe ah okay that in like that it actually won't even go all the way down if you put it backwards Perfect. see it kind of binds yes. up yeah Perfect. and that don't even go all the way around so you really got to have it in that right spot for it to fall all the way down okay all right on your lid here you got a front that always goes to the front of your pump does it say front? Yep. I can't see it. Oh yeah, yeah, got it. Set that on there to 45. Give it a little snug, don't have to be super tight. Okay. All right, to turn the system back on, we're just gonna hit our filter button. So we shut it off out here, now we're gonna turn it back on with the main box. Now, come back over here, we left this bleeder valve open. Now we're just gonna bleed all the air back off the system. You'll hear our air start coming out of this. When water comes out of here, we're gonna lock it down. Just repriming the system. You'll hear air now. Water comes out, you can let it run for a second till you get a good steady stream. Lock it down. Okay. Doesn't have to be yucks. Just nope, that's you pretty much got it on. blue hose here is your discharge hose for the pool if you ever really needed to drain a bunch out, say we had a hurricane, whatever. Take this to the road. This valve here is just like your ones down here, wherever that raised white arrow is, it's closed. So when you want to dump water out of the pool, you're going to loosen this, turn that raised white arrow straight to the sky. Now your water is going to come out here out of your discharge hose. Well, your overflow is going to take care of the majority of it. So okay. You don't get any heavy, heavy rains. Uh, Is there anything that we should make sure we don't do? Do not close this pipe and this pipe simultaneously. Obviously, it doesn't seem like there's that many these closures. These your main actuators. But these, you would never want to shut both of these lines off. Yeah. Because then you would have nowhere for that water to go. Right, yeah. So these always stay open. Like I said, you always, you're going to shut one off when you vacuum. And you would open it back up when you get done vacuuming. So this is going to stay where it, it is. is until you go into spa mode, and then it's going to automatically turn it. So. Until oh, until you okay, until it's okay. it'll do its own stuff. Yep. Okay. All right, we can do the rest. Of the <laughs> Back to our <laughs> main page here. All right. Okay. When you want to go use your spa, mm -hmm. all you're going to do is hit this pull button. Okay. It's going to turn the spa. Right. The valves automatically turn themselves over there. Then you're gonna hit your more button. On our second page here, we got blower. Right. And then turn your blower on. The jets in the spa are air fed, so when you turn that blower on, it's gonna feed air to the jets. And okay. you'll hear it start bubbling. Okay. That's all you do to use the spa. Oh, okay. Now does it heat? Yes. Doing that? Okay. Well you gotta turn the heater on. Oh, okay. Okay. That's the next thing here. Now okay. this is your heat pump here. Okay. So all you're gonna do when you wanna use your heat pump, hit heat pump. Give it a second, then you pump turns on over there. Okay. Now, with this thing, you can preset your temperatures. That way, you don't have to go in and change your temperatures when you want to turn your heater on. Okay. So, everything through your menu button, when you get the settings, mm -hmm. you're going to right arrow. You can preset these. I just put the spa temperature on 98. You can always adjust them up or down. 
right arrow. This is going to be your pool heat, 83. You can adjust that if you need to. Okay. So pretty much whatever mode, like right now we're in just spa mode. Okay. When I turn my heater on, the, the heater is going to heat to 100 and whatever I had on our spa here. Or actually 97. Okay. If you wanted the spa temp to 104, just bump it up. Okay. Is that what most people have it at? 100, I got a spa at my house, 104 is hot. Okay. So right now, we're in spa mode. We turned our heater on, we're heating. It's gonna heat the spa at 104. Okay. And you'll see the spa, it'll go, yes. it'll change. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. If we were back to say, say we hit spa, get back to pool, mm -hmm. come over here, turn our blower back off once we got done with the spa. Now our heat pump's still on. Now it's gonna be heating both bodies of water. Okay. To that 83 I had set. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you get done with your heat pump. And you hear it click off over there. Okay. Now we're back to our normal spillover. Okay. It might take, you know, depending on the weather, it might take 30 minutes. If it's really cold, it's probably going to take a little bit longer. But okay. once your spa gets heated wherever you want to get in it, okay. then you hit your more button. Then you can turn your blower on. Okay. But the blower only really needs to be on when you're in it. Okay. Okay. It doesn't have to be on when you're heating. Okay. Turn that off and back. So you can get in the spa and have the heater on mm -hmm. without the bubblers or blowers. Blowers. Yep. blowers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. That blower doesn't even have to be on. That's just going to give you that maximum pressure. Okay. Okay. We'll go back to the pool. And shut our heat pump off if we don't need it. Okay. Pretty basic there. Okay. And I saw spillover. Spillover oh, is, the sp I've got it all preset where it slowly spills over. Okay. If you want it to really gush over, you go to spill mm -hmm. and it's really going to gush over. Okay. So if you want to heat that when you're in spa mode, you turn your heater on, it's going to heat just your spa. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you let it run for probably a couple minutes, it'll actually stop spilling over. And it's going to hold that body of water in your just your spa, and it's going to heat in there. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. So it won't spill over like that when you're in spa mode and you got your heater on. It won't spill over like it's doing right. Yeah. Now. Okay. okay. Just always remember whatever's highlighted is on. Uh -huh. So once you get done with your heat pump, make sure you shut it off. Because if you go out of town for two weeks or whatever, and you leave your heat pump on, it's going to keep maintaining that heat. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're not going to be able to afford the house. How long generally would it, you think it'll take to heat up a? a just your spa? Just a spa. 30 minutes. 30, okay. Mm -hmm. Depending on the weather. Yeah. Granted, if you're trying, them things work off the air temp. Yeah. So if it's 40 degrees, it's going to take a little longer. Yeah. If you got, you know, 70 degree day, probably 30, 35 minutes. Tops. Yeah. And what? Spillover, this is what the spillover will do. All the time. Okay. Yes. You always want it spilling over because you're going to be chlorinating both bodies of water. Yeah. Okay. So you'd never want to stop that spillover because you're not you're not putting any chlorine in the spa. It's yeah. always going to spill over like that. Okay. If you go to your spill mode, it's just going to make it gush more. It turns the valve over there where your your returns in the pool go fully off, and it puts all the pressure to your spa jets to make it gush over. Uh, so we want to obviously we don't want the pump running all the time, right? Maybe we just want the to hear the mm -hmm. the water coming over in the evening or something. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so the pool doesn't have to be running all the, the pool and spa don't have to be running all the time. No, we're gonna set up a time. Next, we're gonna set up a timer. Usually, people do like an eight to five yeah. timer. You can manually turn this pool on anytime you want by hitting the filter button. Yeah, that's gonna manually override the timer. Okay. Say at nine o'clock at night and you wanted the pool running, just hit filter. It's going to fire the pump up. Yeah. And then pit filter again to turn it off done. and it'll go back and then to it goes back whatever to its, it's timer. supposed yes. to do. Okay. And then how do you do the lights? All right. Just hit your lights button. That's going to turn your lights on pool and spa. They're okay. tied together. Okay. To switch colors, you toggle it on or off. And it switches your colors. Whatever color you like, when you shut it off, the next time you turn it back on, it's going to be locked on that color. I think they do like eight solid colors and like four light shows where they flick through all. <laughs> um, 
So to turn it on and off, you just mash it. It's a toggle Correct. switch. You just mash These it. things are fully waterproof, so it takes a little getting used to it to start turning stuff on or off. It's a little bit of a delay, isn't there? Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So cooler spot and filter always need to be lit. highlighted. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yep. Okay. Anything highlighted is on. Okay. okay. Yep. That's pretty basic on the remote here. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. It was saying um, system check and flashing and stuff. Yep. That will never do that again, right? We're actually going to add salt today. Is it's that going off because we don't have any salt in the pool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. It's probably easier. Anytime you do like timer changes, it's a little easier to do it on the box out here uh, instead of this. Yeah. So we'll go out there and go okay. over that. And I brought this, the rest of this out. I didn't know what this was. That uh, test kit for the pool, we'll go over that. Okay. Um, pretty much this is the same thing as your remote you have here. <laughs> so set up a timer here. Everything goes through your menu button. Hit your timer till you see timers menu. We're going to right arrow into it. I've had this thing running, well, actually I set it up on a timer already. I did that last time. I've got it running 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Yeah, that's what, 10 hours? We probably could bump it down to nine. Mm -hmm. So if you did want to change your start time, up or down, right arrow, this is going to be your end time. So we're going to lower that to 5 p.m. Just like that. And does that mean that the pushing, the overflow rather mm -hmm. will stop? Five, yep, the okay. whole system is going to shut down at 5 o'clock. Okay, but if we wanted to hear it? All you do is hit that filter button. Okay, mm -hmm. and so everything over here starts as well. Mm -hmm. And then if we wanted it to stop, we just mash the filter button on the Correct. remote too. Okay. We can set it to come on a little later in the day if you'd like it running later in the evening. That way you don't have to hit that filter button every day. If, I don't yeah. know if we have any set. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, there's no point. Uh, I mean, we don't Only need it running. Only time things really need to run early is when you have like solar and stuff. Have, have what? Have solar panels. Oh, so, oh yeah. and they want them starting early. That way they can go ahead and start heating. Uh, so yeah, yeah. No, that's not a. Button. Not having solar, you probably could start this thing around ten if you want. Yeah, ten would be fine. Yeah, Why don't we do that yeah. for now? Because we won't. We would probably really won't be in it in the pool. Only the hot tubs what we'll be interested in. Right, same thing here, back to our timers menu, right arrow, so we're going to bump this up to 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or no, I don't know. Be 7 p.m. And then we can always turn it on if we want, Correct. and then to so manually on or off. So right now, every day, seven days a week, it's going to come on at 10 a.m., shut off at 7 p.m. So whenever the, quote, well, I'll say pool for the whole thing is on, when it's on, it's spilling. Correct. Okay. It's always there's, going to there's spill. No, it'll never be on with it not spilling. Correct. Okay. Yep. You and always want it spilling over because you're putting chlorine into that spot. Okay. Got yeah. it. Oh, uh, what else here? Um, back to our settings menu here. You can do your, um, like you change your temperature out here on your spa if you wanted to. Right now, when we had it on 104, if we wanted to lower that to 100, we could do it out here. Same thing if you right arrow, this is your pool temp. If you wanted to adjust that up or down on that. Variable speed settings. You can change the speed on the pump. This pool runs pretty good on about 90%. I probably believe it pretty close to 90%. Um, it's less loud if it's lower, though, right? Correct. So is it loud in the house? It was uh, this past week. We can yes. um, yeah. Put it on the pump. Yeah. 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 Let's pump it down to uh, put it down to 80 and see what it does here. Go through our settings here, BSP settings, so that's your variable speed pump. Plus the enter, just go down to 80. Now, if it gets too low, what? how would we know? Usually when you get too low, you're not going to be spilling over good. It's going to be trickling down. Yeah, okay. Like it was to be. Yeah. That right. case, the, while it was doing that before, that filter was pretty good. And, and, that's, and, and the result of that is that we don't get chlorine into the pool. So that's why it's important to keep right. it. You always want it spilling yeah. over. So well, pretty much, yeah, you can adjust that if you need it. I wouldn't go any lower than 80%. All right. Oh, what else 
here. How about the minimum amount of hours you could run the pump? Minimum winter, you could probably do get away with six hours. Yeah. Summer, yeah. We probably could go down a little more. And more. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd take it down. I mean, while you're here. Because I think the only time we'll really be interested is turning it on at night then just to have it. Yeah. With the exception of times I want to use it in the hot wanna, tub. Do you want to still do the 10 a.m.? Uh, let's make that 11. Do 11. Shape some off there, then now we're at eight hours, right? So to six, okay? To six? Yeah, I'm up to six. So I mean, that if we would just be like to sit out here and have some noise, we can just match filter it. Yeah. Over yeah. And you can always come back here and change this timer if you want to add a couple yeah. of flowers. Summertime, you're definitely going to need to bump that back up to that time. Okay. Sure. That's what do you consider summer? Yeah. We start getting some salt in this pool. You're going to get enough, you're going to get your parts million pop up on your remote or out here. This is your parts per million level for your salt. You always want to keep that between 2,700 and 3,400 parts per million. When you're in that range, that means you're good to go, you're making glory. I brought, we'll probably do, I'll do four bags today. Give it, within 24 hours, it's going to give you a reading on your uh, remote. Rule of thumb is I got salt on my pool at my house. I get it to where it stabilizes on you know, around 3,000. I don't add salt till it says 2,900 on the remote. 40 pound bag of salt, I don't have my pen, but if you read this, a 40 pound bag of salt raises 500 parts per million. So if you let that number drop to 2,900, you add a full, bag, full 40 pound bag of salt, that's gonna raise you right up to your 3,400. Some people do half bags, which is 250. I feel it's easier to just do a bag at a time. Yeah. Salt's not something you're gonna add that often. You might add a bag every two months, maybe. Summertime, it might get a little less, a little more, just with the rains. The more rains, it's obviously gonna be more salt. Um, and we'll know, because it'll tell us. And it'll, it'll tell be, you everything on your screen, right? Will it just pop up on its own, or do yes. we have to mash a button and say, okay, okay. So always keep an eye on that. Like I said, we're probably gonna do three or four bags today. I would wait till probably it's Friday today, give it maybe all day tomorrow, maybe midday Sunday. Check your remote, see where your levels are at. If you're above 2,900, don't worry about it. If you're below 2,900, add a bag. Now, is it set at a level that if it gets below, that's when we get our check setting? Correct. And that's, that is constant, or do we set that? No, it's already preset in it's there. Preset. Once you drop below your 2700, oh, okay. that's when you're going to get a check system. Okay. Remote. I think it did say something about salt mm -hmm. done. Yeah. Okay. okay. It lets you know when, you, when you're at the minimum. Okay. But you never want to let it get that low. As long as you stick with that theory, 2900 below, add a bag. 2900 above, don't worry about it. Yeah. Okay. And you'll show us on the remote where to get what it's set at? Yes. What it, okay. Yes. Okay. Now, also here you can do this from your remote or out here. Through your settings, go through your heater settings here. We'll go over that in a second here. Spa chlorinator. Everything's tied together, so we're gonna leave your spa chlorinator on zero. Right earth through here, this is your pool chlorinator. This is how you regulate the chlorine output going into the pool. Pool this size, we're probably gonna start this off on about 50. Give it a good week of running, making its own chlorine. Test, if you're low on your chlorine, you can bump this up a little bit to maybe 60. If you're making too much chlorine on your 50%, you can bump it down. Once you usually, once you get the happy medium, you really don't have to adjust them too much. But every pool is a little different. So we're going to leave it at 50. We'll start it off on 50. Like I said, let it run for about a good week or so, making its own chlorine, and then test and see where your levels are. And then to leave, like, okay, you have it set for pool chlorinator 50%. To get it to a different screen, do you match the yep. middle? Right or left arrow here. Yep. Okay. We get back, this is our spa chlorinator. Okay. Like I said, that one's always going to be off. Okay. Because everything's tied together, and when it spills over, that's what's chlorinated. Super chlorinate. Say so your 
chemicals got way out of balance in the pool and you had no chlorine for a couple weeks in the summer and the pool started turning green on you. This is pretty much like super shock in the pool. You go up here, now you're pretty much dumping some massive chlorine in the pool. I would run it for maybe a day so your chlorine levels got where you needed it and go back to off. That's nice, so we don't have to use external chemicals to dump in a pool or anything like that. Right. Right. As long as you keep up with everything, you won't have to super chlorinate. The more you super chlorinate, the more it uses up your cell. So it's making it work yeah. harder and harder. Right. So try not to super chlorinate unless you just have to. That's about it on that. Um, date and time. and Daylight savings time. This thing won't change. You'll have to go change it. Granted, uh -huh. it's still going to run your six or nine hours, but it'll just be an hour later. Yeah. Oh, what else here? That's pretty much everything on here. These things are pretty basic. Turn the heater back off. Think you got me so far? Yeah. Um, so you turn the heater off. Mm -hmm. When you make an adjustment here, like if you turn it higher, lower, or whatever, it's going to turn it on just because you're making an adjustment. Oh, gotcha. Once yeah. you get your adjustment made to wherever you want the, the spa temp, then you can turn it back off. Okay. But it's going to do the same thing if you go if you go to pool heat. When you say you wanted your pool heat to 90, you see it's highlighted. It's trying to turn the heat pump on. You wanted that on about 83-ish. Is that what you wanted it if it comes on? It'll... What, the pool? Yeah. Yeah, A3 is good. Okay. We'll leave that back off. And that's pretty much everything out here. We'll get some salt in the pool, go over the test strips. All we're going to do, hit our filter button, shut the system down. Okay. Now we're going to go to our cell here and we're going to pull it apart. These are just two unions. This is about the only thing on the system you're going to have to have a wrench. These make it a lot easier. There's two unions. One goes one way, the other goes the other. And the whole cell will lift off your plumbing here. Just like that. Then you would look inside your cell, see them grids and stuff in there? Yes. Uh -huh. Make sure there's no leaves or anything like that blocking any of your grids in there. Okay. Over time, every house is a little different in here. Over time, you're going to get a calcium buildup in here. And when you get that, Hayward makes a cell stand. It screws onto the bottom of your cell, and you do 50-50, half muriatic acid, half water. Fill it all the way to the top. And what it does, it eats that calcium scale build up off the grids in there. Hmm, okay. And I can get, get that at the pool company as well. You can order them off Amazon too if you want. Now again, how will we know that we need to when we need to do that? A remote, we'll it'll say, it'll remote. say inspect, um, but just when you pull it apart, just look in here. You'll see when you when you start getting calcium build up, you'll know because it starts blocking all them grids in there. And it's doing it's telling us to inspect based on just a time, right? Just so a, it's, yeah, it's, it's not got a three month timer. Okay. Every three months, okay. it's gonna automatically come on whether this okay. thing's dirty or not. How what, do you get leaves out if you say? Just take leaves? your hose like a jet nozzle oh, okay. and jet everything okay. out. Usually, you don't get too many From leaves this in there. Side out or you can the do other either side. side. Either okay. side. Okay. But like I said, when you get a calcium buildup, that's when you're gonna to wanna to get that cell stand. They're probably, I think, 30 bucks on Amazon. Pretty much just screws onto here. Take your muriatic acid, add your water first, top it off 50-50, fill it all the way up to the top, and then it'll sizzle in there and it actually eats all the calcium off the um, off the grids in there. Okay, and how long do you leave it? In? I would do it for maybe a minute, dump oh. it out, wash it with fresh water. If you see still more calcium in there, do it again. I wouldn't let it sit in there for more than a minute. Okay. Some, it depends on how bad it gets. If it gets really bad, you're going to have to do it two times. Okay. If you keep up with it, one time is more than enough. Okay. We have a water softener. Does that affect it at all? It'll probably is that help. Even a okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, right, so this water is running. Yeah, it would be running through our water softener, or, or is this coming from a different source, the water? It's, it's our Is it to your house? out, like your hose bibs outside? You yeah, know? I think so, yeah. But still, is that maybe once a year you'll have to do that, maybe. Okay. I've seen people do it two or three times a year, and I've seen people do it maybe once every three years. It just all depends on that. Thing down fairly even here. A 
then take our channel locks here and just get them a good snug. They don't have to be super tight. Okay. Right, so if, you, if you ever did get it off remote, you just hold your up and your down arrow at the same time and it puts it remote where it connects to the prologue. Okay. You always gonna dump your acid. Muratic acid goes directly into the pool. Okay. Never get this around your